three, two, one. Can we be live? We are live. Hello, everyone. Hi. Perfect. We're live. Everything is good. I can hear myself, which means sound works. Hello, wherever you are. Welcome to another episode of Test Containers Live. Today is a very exciting day. Today we have in our studio uh, Ivan Panavarev. Ivan is a staff engineer at Synthesized, a lecturer at a few universities, conference speaker, and a brilliant software developer in general. I'm very, very happy to have him here. And today we're going to talk about Synthesized. We're going to talk about data generation, data masking, how those things can help you in your tests and in your software development, which are all great topics. So without further ado, please welcome Ivan. Ivan, how are you doing today? Yeah, hi, hi, Alec. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, besides everything, I'm a big fan actually of test containers because I've been using them six, since maybe 2016 when I first heard about them at, uh, at some uh, conference. And I've been using them all the time for my tests. Love, I, lo I love hearing that. Um, it's incredible. Uh, to have a very vibrant community. We are truly blessed at, uh, with the test containers projects because once people start using them, very often uh, they just stick with it as a preferred method for, for testing. Uh, you are mostly working in the Java ecosystem, am I right? Yes, yes, mostly Java. Java and Kotlin. Kotlin as well. Ooh. Which one? Which one do you like more? <laughs> Well, actually, uh, yeah, it it changes gradually, changes gradually uh, to to the Kotlin side. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, big question. <laughs> that's a that's a common sentiment. Uh, it's a nice language. The teams are pushing forward both uh, on the Java side and obviously on the Kotlin side as well. So uh, it's good to have competition there. All right, let's get to the uh, to the topic. Can you please tell us? In a few words, maybe, what does Synthesize do and what's what are mm -hmm. the products and how do they help developers? Uh, OK, so at this stage, Synthesize uh, develops uh, two products, two, like two brothers, SDK and TDK. SDK stands for Scientific Data Kit, and TDK, it stands for Test Data Kit. And uh, both of them are about synthesizing and transforming data. Uh, SDK, it works with a single table or spreadsheet, or it can be a CSV file. Uh, it uh, just uh, uses machine learning to build the model of, of the data on this, of this file. And then it can produce realistically looking data, just like the source data. Uh, what I am talking, uh, what I am uh, working on currently, uh, I'm working for the team that develops TDK, and TDK is uh, for relational databases. So when we have a relational database or a relational database schema, we can fill it up with some mock data, uh, maybe generated, or maybe we can transform some source data into just uh, masked or some, somehow scrambled data or some generated data so that we can use it in development and testing. All right. Uh, and you're working personally on this uh, TDK. TDK? Yeah, TDK thing. Yeah, because <laughs> right. it's, it's written in Java, as, unlike SDK, which uh, yeah, uses machine learning, and that's why it's written in Python. So this is another story. Maybe at some point we will join these products, I don't know, but now like SDK is more about machine learning, TDK is more about data transformations. Right. Very good, very good. And uh, you said that the TDK would be used and the data it generates would be used for uh, local development and testing. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it is it a common practice? Is it uh, difficult to get like a, a set of data for testing? Can they, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> what are the challenges there? <laughs> I see. Yeah, of course. In, in in many cases, it's just enough just to copy your production data or maybe uh, just invent your data if your uh, database is actually not very big or not very uh, complicated, of course. Uh, but in in many 
like enterprise situations, it's not the case. You might have production data, but you don't want your sensitive data to be leaked everywhere, anywhere. Right. So you you just uh, <clears throat> uh, don't want to use production data as is and give it to developers and testers and maybe some mm -hmm. uh, some other parties that are going to to develop your software. Uh, Another another scenario is maybe you are only starting and you don't have enough production data. So you have a database schema and maybe you have some records in it, but you want to test the scenario when you have millions of records, how your application is going to work there. So you need to generate data. Or you may have an opposite scenario when you're working, you've been working for many years and you have gigabytes and gigabytes of data and uh, sensitive for not is just to burden some to copy it to <laughs> always to copy to restore it to, for for developers waste of time so you need only a tiny fraction of it a subset of this data so all this is just uh, separate uh, separate cases and in many cases you just need to mix and match say you want to subset this table you want to generate this table you want to inflate this table so it can be uh, it can be complicated, actually, for real life scenarios. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like whatever, whatever you do, do not use your production data for your tests. That is just, uh, well, irresponsible, especially mm -hmm. if you deal with some sort of sensitive data. And the challenges of of actually using like large production like data sets. This is something that we hear very often in the test containers community. Um, very often people come and say like, oh, my, my database initialization logic takes so much time because I have like mm -hmm. literally like gigabytes of, uh, of data in my, in my snapshot. And but actually uh, do they need all these gigabytes of data? Maybe for testing, it's just enough to have maybe a thousand records of in each table. Yeah, probably, probably not. And also not for all the tests very often like your tests work on some subsystems of the larger system. So maybe they need like a, mm -hmm. a certain slice of their schema for some components and then a, a different slice of data for other components, but because they don't know, like it's hard to know in <laughs> advance, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it becomes a manual problem and very often they don't have a good solution. Uh, and you, you mentioned a couple of uh, verbs there, what you can do with data. Uh, you you said about masking and you you said inflating the tables. Can mm -hmm. you maybe uh, expand like what are the common like what do they mean like how they are different and uh, just yeah, to give us are... the context what those are. Yeah, these are yeah like standard standard things that you can do with your database to prepare it for for development for testing. So uh, first of all, uh, masking and generation. Uh, masking is when you have some data and you want to just hide some sensitive part. So you can have, I don't know, credit card numbers and you want just to change numbers in the middle or in the beginning of credit cards, uh, credit, of actual credit card numbers so they, they won't leak or uh, person names. Uh, masking can be more than this, actually. So we can... Uh, uh, not necessarily uh, just mask out, just uh, erase names. We can substitute a person name with another imaginary person name, which will look quite realistically, but still this choice is just uh, depends on the actual data. And uh, yeah, in, in, in many cases, maybe masking is not the most uh, safe way because with all the modern AI and with all the modern machine learning, uh, like people who wants to know about your, the, your real data can somehow figure out some patterns in your data if they are just masked. So uh, if you do really, really need like full, uh, full safety, uh, you need to generate your data for, from scratch. So generation is just uh, generating a data based on some, uh, some setup, some models, uh, uh, some parameters of generating uh, generator using random number uh, generations and another from another perspective what we can do with data is like keeping the data the same size uh, the same size so we can have a uh, say a table with 1 million records and we can generate a table with 1 million records how do we know 
how many uh, how many records we need we just count them from the original table so they won't be completely different but the number will be the same uh we can actually subset a data so that get only maybe 10 records in each of the table and we can inflate so masking generation subsetting inflating and we can mix and match for for specific tables this this approaches perfect uh yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you do want to hide the data. You do want to keep the relationship between data fairly consistent, maybe, if you mm -hmm. if you work from the real-world data um, and then uh, working with the volumes. Well, how do you, like, where's the difficulty coming from, right? It sounds, mm -hmm. like, it sounds difficult, right? I don't think I would personally be like, ah, what, this is nonsense. I would implement this in the, in a weekend. Uh, what am I not an engineer or something? But uh, it also feels like there is uh, a lot of like details and also a lot of uh, internal inherent complexity uh, yeah. that needs to take into account. Yeah. Why is it difficult to work with with data and generate data? Well, actually, I I heard about like many uh, instances where uh, people are implementing such uh, such tools themselves. Uh, for example, folks working at banks, they always mask, they have to mask the data, of course. Uh, folks that are working for uh, huge enterprises, they have to mask or somehow just uh, uh, erase sensitive data from their databases. So uh, they are implementing these tools, but these tools, of course, uh, what they are doing, they are like specifically fit for their databases, for their database schemers, of course. And uh, if you like to build, if you would like to build a general, a generic tool, uh, then you have to deal with all the possible database schemas. And this can be tricky. And uh, uh, first of all, because of uh, 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 because of constraints, of database constraints. So, you know, there are foreign key constraints, there are data type constraints. And uh, if you start thinking about it, uh, say we have foreign key constraint and uh, uh, we you cannot just randomly delete a record from the database. You have to, first you have to delete all the child records if you are deleting a parent record. Uh, the same is true if you are going to insert records. You cannot just randomly insert records. You have to first insert parent record then you have to insert child records. And if, what if you have a cycle? If A references B, B references C, C references A, then things become really, really complicated. So uh, yeah, what you have to do, uh, what we have to do actually is to build an internal execution plan about what we are doing first and next, what we're inserting there, here and there, what, what maybe foreign key we have to disable temporarily then enable uh, to, uh, so that all the data that we'll insert will be consistent. But of course we have to extract all the metadata uh, concerning all the other constraints like lengths of strings, like nullability and stuff, uh, so that we, we, we're taking all this into account. So this is where the most uh, difficulty lies. And another, another thing is, of course, performance. So uh, if you are just working with really big amount of data, <laughs> you, you start thinking how to parallelize this work. And of course, we have some uh, like uh, slices of work with the, which is parallelizable, some slices which is not parallelizable because we have to do this thing before other thing. So uh, this uh, all again requires building like internal execution plan and then executing it in parallel and in just uh, predefined order. So definitely okay. not something that one would uh, build over a weekend, although I heard, <laughs> I heard from people like this, uh, this opinions that, ah, we are doing this for in our just company. Of course, you are doing this, but it works only with, with your da database schema. Right. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is hard. Even just the, uh, from my personal experience, just uh, inserting the bulk data, mm -hmm. if, you, if you say take a, like even a small sample applications, that uh, I normally show. And if you take the snapshot of the data, like you take the, the dump of the Postgres, for example, and you would like to run it, and you would like to run it as a script, it would not work because there are constraints that are violating. The foreign keys are not in the right order. 
And the very often people uh, stumble upon that. Test containers offers a convenience API to specify the initialization script. And then we do our best to just execute the script that you mm -hmm. provide. But like it breaks at, at the corner cases where you have uh, things like foreign keys in the wrong order. And then we like there is different way to initialize the database with test containers. But uh, this is very often what people encounter when they go with this uh, very straightforward approach immediately. So that is, yeah, that is, I can see how people can stumble upon this. I can see how that could be a problem. Um, and the tooling could uh, definitely help. So you say, uh, you're saying that synthesized uh, TDK, right, uh, can help uh, with the data generation. Uh, mm -hmm. How does it look like? Uh, uh, okay, shall I share my screen and <laughs> yes, show? you can let me let me add it to the stream uh, right uh, here. Okay, okay, uh, yeah. First of all, uh, let me say that what I'm going to to show is actually just a small part of my like fully fledged uh, talk. Uh, Don't invent data for integration tests. Synthesized it, in which I uh, consider various approaches uh, for preparing your data for integration tests which includes, for example, a golden dump approach where you have some dump, some SQL script, and you're making it executable, inserting all the foreign keys in correct order and, and running it. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to actually show today is yeah, TDK ATC. Uh, it all starts with, uh, with a dependency, uh, Maven or Gradle, whichever you prefer. TDK ATC means uh, TDK test containers integration. Uh, so this is actually now is considered an official module for uh, test containers. Uh, so it it's is. available. Yeah, it is. It's available on Maven Central, which means that you can pull it into your project as a dependency anytime and use it for free. Well, actually, uh, like with many other uh, official modules, uh, the software that it runs, uh, the TDK itself, it runs it in container, is a proprietary software, uh, but uh, it has quite a functional uh, free mode. So if you don't have license, if you are not going to buy a license, you can try it for free, and it, it has just enough functionality that, that will solve problems uh, in practice. What you are limited uh, as far as I uh, know, is by by the number of tables. So if you have too many tables, you you will have to uh, to buy a license, and you can provide the license key, and then you'll have like fully fledged TDK here. The next thing that you are going to do is, of course, configuration. If we are going to test uh, uh, Spring uh, uh, Spring application, it's all about configurations. And let me find. Let me find. Okay, so. As I told before, uh, TDK is just a thing that takes one database and transforms it to another database. So in our case, we need to create uh, two containers, input and output, input and output, and then we are running this uh, synthesized TDK. This is a class provided by, uh, by the Maven dependency to transform input to output. And actually, as you can see, output is the only container that will survive the initialization, and this is uh, the uh, container with test data that we are going to use. So in input uh, container, you are doing your all your schema migration, all your flyaway, liquid base, maybe uh, applying some golden dump uh, for the data. But after uh, after transformation, all you need is uh, just output uh, output container. Right. Besides, this uh -huh. this is uh, this is a very cool setup actually. I haven't thought about this for for long, but it seems very cool, right? Like you get one container and you generate your schema there and mm -hmm. your seed data and then synthesized synthesized, sorry, uh synthesized uh transforms that container into like a and well takes two containers and fills the output. That is cool. That is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So you can actually maybe uh, maybe you can take a container with some real life data and uh, mask it. I don't know. So this, but that's that's what happens before uh, initialization of the test set. And uh, 
what else does it need is is a config and uh, config is actually a script uh, it's uh, yaml as you can see uh, which uh, provides parameters for tdk uh, software what what to do what actually uh, it must do with your uh, uh, with your database so this yaml has a schema so uh, id will help you will teach you what what you can do so in our case we want to generate uh, we want to generate 10 records per each table that's why default config default config means it's a config for each table by default uh, if you are not provided some specific config for for some other table and note this global seed parameter which is also really important uh, this means that if you will run generation repeatedly with the same global seed you will always get the same result so um, all your tests are actually repeatable if your program is failing if your test is failing you can rerun and get the same data and uh, it will be repeatable right without global seed it will be random and it may just uh, uh, you can have an error in one case you might for the second run it can be a green test so yeah it's, no it, it's gonna be very hard to replicate issues yeah and yeah yeah it's data so, dependent if you don't have the fixed uh, seed ability yeah yeah so this is yeah fixed seed and uh yeah you always it's always recommend to to set this not just re leave this empty okay then uh, uh so as with any test uh it's better uh to to use some appropriate patterns and we are testing some um, business logic that uh, depends on database on database data uh, so for this uh, there is a nice pattern called object mother which is actually another name just another name for for a factory and this factory can provide us uh, all the objects that we need uh, if for example we need a conference oh by the way i forgot to show you uh, the actual schema or, or actual schema uh, of our database so uh, in this demo this is a product for an imaginary uh, conference program committee tech conference program committee so we have uh, records in our tables about speakers talks and conferences and since uh, one talk can be delivered by one or more speaker uh, speakers we have many-to-many -many relationships so this schema is extremely simplistic but it has it demonstrates two types of relationships one to many and many to many so that we can see that tdk works uh, with both right. uh, so so yeah uh, if if you need a conference for some testing the testing purposes uh, you just getting a random a first uh, actually this is the first conference that comes in from the conference table remember your data uh the data in your database is is random it's generated uh so you don't need to invent it you don't need to write your, your golden dump you don't need to write maybe complex object mother where you have to invent ah this this conference is called so and so it's held then there and then and so and so on so you're just taking the first uh, conference that comes in a table and uh, so about talks about some specific objects when we need a talk without feedback if we want to check some uh, business logic for, we need a talk without feedback so we can either filter it out from our generated data or take some random talk change its status save it and uh, provide this object so it can be either way dependent or depending on, on your current situation so let's let's go to the test actually and see how it's going to work i'll put a breakpoint here and i will start the test and uh i'm running this using uh, atomic jars test containers cloud of course very good uh, very good i support <laughs> that yeah and oh uh, yeah let's wait while it's while it's spinning up and Right, so it pulled the containers. I see you using Postgres 11. Yeah. Uh, and now it's getting the TDK container as well. Mm. This is actually this is actually another cool thing. I don't know if many people are aware, but like it's very having containers is a very convenient 
delivery mechanism for your tooling, right? So you don't actually need like a cross-platform binary or cross-platform mm -hmm. like Java application. Uh, you just give them uh, your users a container. Yeah, as, yeah, and I, of course I can run this on on machine like M1 notebook or X86 notebook, so it doesn't matter which which my which is my CPU. Uh, so uh, and actually I'm saving lots of disk space. <laughs> uh, so here we have a, a breakpoint, and let's let's stop and see what we have in our database. So actually I connected to to the database created by container. And let's look uh, what we have in uh, in our tables. So remember, uh, the mode was generation, and the ta target uh, target row number was ten. So actually, for all the four uh, tables, we generated ten records. And this is uh, like enough. Actually, this is enough to test like any business logic imaginable for such an application. All, yes, all the possible. You have a, you have a very small like set of uh, features. Yeah, do features you, and like, tables. Do you have like a sort of a, a rule of thumb, or how would you recommend? Because you said like if you need a talk, for example, without uh, feedback or something, without reviews, you can mm -hmm. filter it out. Uh, but, and you say ten is enough to generate and have a few talks without feedback, so you can test your application with those. If I would have more complex rules, what do you would you recommend? Like uh, just... Well, what I uh, personally experimented with, of course, it's uh, better not to rely on randomly generated data. Uh, so uh, actually, you, you mean if like you have, fully? You, yeah, fully. Yeah. So you 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 need uh, you need a very specific state of, of an object. It's better to take a random object from the database and uh, just uh, set a state like here so i'm uh, uh, i'm getting a random talk here actually i'm setting uh, a status which i need in review and i'm setting a feedback like empty feedback because i'm going to uh, somewhere i'm going to test the rule that no talk can be rejected without feedback so if we are rejecting a talk we must provide a feedback this rule is not followed but by all the conferences, but by some conferences, it, it is followed. So right, uh, <laughs> that is that is well. With disregarding the business logic of the sample application, that's a cool pattern that I think the the viewers can uh, remember. You take a random piece of data because it's random; like it doesn't matter which you mm -hmm. get, right? And mm -hmm. then yeah. uh, you make it follow the rules that you need uh, if it if it doesn't already. I that yeah. that is cool. That is a yeah, cool and approach. then 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 your method is called talk without feedback. So I can use this method uh, in all the tests where I need this talk without a feedback and just a talk in a specific uh, state, right? So I can t use this object for my tests. Right. Perfect. Very cool. Uh, uh, okay. So uh, uh, if we look at at the talk table, for example, you see that the name and feedback, uh, these like uh, random, random just numbers and uh, uh, characters, because all that TDK knows about this table, about its uh, fields, is just its uh, meta information, right? So we know that this is varchar 20 and this is varchar 5. So no other information it can infer. So it just uh, in generation mode, in generation mode, it just. Uh, uh randomly generates something but uh for some uh for some columns we just cannot uh, cannot accept this because uh status is actually a field that we are going to deserialize into enum right so we have four statuses so it cannot be just random uh random value uh, uh, otherwise uh we will we will fail on deserialization so uh what we are doing for this for this we are using we are setting uh uh, a specific generator called categorical generator. And we say that for, for the field status of the table public.talk, uh, public uh, please use categorical generator uh, with these categories and uh, these probabilities. So they, uh, they are assigned randomly, so mostly evenly uh, distributed uh, here. Uh, so this is how it works. And uh, well, actually, why, it's, why it needs to be so complicated, actually, we, uh, 
sometimes we want a generator work with a couple of columns like name and address for example or not name and address name and uh gender so uh you don't want yeah, like yeah. the data be like <laughs> female name mm -hmm. and male male as associated with uh, like so uh it can be several columns uh, produced by by single generator and if we look at this like uh we have maybe a couple of dozen of various uh, various generators available and right. uh, these ge generators they come from the tdk for, so from the tooling it is not something that you've implemented in the app, right? Uh, yes, uh, they are coming in in tooling. If we we have a really nice reference for it, we it, this call, they are called transformations, and you see you have like a complete uh, complete documentation about uh, when you can use each of these generators because not all of them are working in all the modes, and. Uh, yeah, uh, all the parameters and all the features. So it's, uh, uh, this is like a full, uh, full documentation. But uh, we are very frequently uh, being asked about uh, giving some extension points in TDK, and I think at certain uh, at certain point of time we will do this, like provide some extension points so that people will be able to write their own generators or maskers for for their own tasks so this is definitely what's in the way but meanwhile we you have this uh two couple of dozens generators and if we look at this speaker table for example so here's a person's name and yeah may, we can be just not very comfortable it looks like a complete gibberish we would like to see some something that resemble uh, resembles person names so let's let's stop this test for now and try another configuration like try to refine our configuration and for this i have prepared i have prepared uh, a person generator and uh which must work for for a column name for of a public speaker table so let's rerun it Let's rerun it and see what it has, what it gives us. <clears throat> okay, so if we open speaker table, now it's no longer gibberish. <laughs> it's Danny has Juliet Moore and so on and so forth. So they are just generated, generated human names. So yeah, this is uh, this is actually all that I wanted to to show you, and uh, of course there are like extensive. Uh, transformations documentation about this YAML, what you what you can do. Right. To to summarize, to summarize, we start our tests or the if I want to run the local development setup, because uh, mm -hmm. that is something that I would definitely run with my Spring Boot application, uh, where test containers will generate me the environment for my application to run while I just explore it normally. Uh, what I can do, I, I add synthesized TDK on my, as my Maven dependency, right? So mm -hmm. I get those capabilities. I spin up two Postgres containers, uh, generate the data, uh, sorry, generate the schema uh, with yeah. my flyway database migrations, with my mm -hmm. schema dump uh, into one of them, and then feed that container and the configuration to the synthesized TDK. And then it will produce me I feed the information about the other container as well, but like the output container will get the data according to the configuration. And there are, uh, besides just getting gibberish data, I can also specify the transformations, which would give me uh, things like categories so I can deserialize things into enums, which will give me like normal name looking strings or will give me addresses uh, or anything like that where there is a um, mm -hmm. a particular uh, particular thing. And then yeah. if I want the objects to conform to certain rules, I can definitely generate just a ton of them and hope for a chance. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> I also can actually produce the API, use the API to take random objects and make them put them into state that I want for the test. Uh, that is very, very cool. 
you, we didn't cover one thing, which is uh, not synthesized or TDK specific, but I <laughs> felt it was very, very interesting. Uh, and I know because I helped you set it up this morning. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> when you, you were connecting, uh, I think it's very cool. I think we should cover it in a few minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah. You were running a test container, right? With the Postgres container. And test containers generates and binds all the ports to run them high value ports. So you can do parallelization and everything in your system. And then you very casually uh, were connecting to the database from your, from your IDE. Uh, how yeah, how, how it works. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, <laughs> actually, before before you show me this, uh, yeah, cool cool feature. What I had to do is actually to break uh, test containers like hack test containers, making them uh, running on some predefined port, so that uh, I like won't have to figure out which port is it running and uh, connect to this port. Like this is like what I normally used to do. For example, if I'm testing some something, I have to put a breakpoint and go to container, figure out on which port it's running, and uh, connect it. it it's it, I'm just wasting tons of time. I used to waste tons of time, but not uh, not now because uh, yeah, help me to find this. What we have here, yes. like preferences, and it's. Uh, no, it, it, there is called a recent feature of Task Container Cloud, which is a prototype. It, the UI and UX of that will change. It's very important. Uh, but we are currently testing this functionality to uh, improve fixed ports. the tooling. Mm -hmm. It's called the fixed ports. And what it gives you, uh, since you are accessing containers through our application, what you can do, you can provide a little configuration that will proxy mm -hmm. uh, the container like will dynamically sort of generate a proxy on a predefined local port, which is here five four three two, uh, into any container that matches the label currently to currently, which is Postgres for you. So your local port five four three two will go into the test containers cloud desktop application, and then that will find the matching container and proxy to the uh, whatever port was exposed randomly high level value port uh, to bind to the port in the configuration. So this way you get to keep both benefits. Uh, your test containers config doesn't rely, like your application code or your test code doesn't rely on the fixed ports. So there are no problems with parallelizing uh, the tests if you want to, um, and there are no collisions, but also because you labeled your container uh, with that label, when you go through test containers desktop into the port 5432, uh, which you configured your Postgres, your ID to go to find the Postgres, uh, it will go and it will connect to the container that is running automatically, making this tooling configuration stable, which I think is a is a is a great thing. And you don't it's have to have amazing. It. Yeah, it's 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 going to save me a lot of time actually. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we are currently we are currently testing this as a prototype. If you are watching this and you're interested in trying this, try it's available in your test containers cloud desktop application, uh, and send us feedback how you like it, what's uh, what we can improve, uh, and so on. It will probably like the the configuration of the properties file will probably change and other things will get better, uh, but the main idea uh, I think has a ton of potential. Yeah, definitely. Right. Thank you. Uh, it was very cool to see that. And we, we had the comments from Edu, uh, who is on the test containers team, actually, maintaining test containers Java. He was like, I was wondering how you connected the database so nicely. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, uh, if, you, if you don't intimately know the how test containers work, like you would expect this to be the default behavior. But if you know, that was kind of magical. Uh, which was yeah. They, they used very... to be a lot of nonsense uh, code here, like to to force them run on this stable port. And of course, if I if if, if these hacks are going to leak into to CI, there there will be problems. So <laughs> I've been using test containers for for a long time, and yeah, I know how it happens. So definitely, yeah. that, that's great. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, this was very good. I hope you learned today about database. Uh, uh, data generation for your tests and local development. 
about some some actions that you can make to do your data and what what are what do they mean like masking or inflating tables and we looked at the test con uh, synthesized uh, TDK in conjunction with test containers to generate data for our sample application here. Uh, it was very, very cool. Ivan, if uh, if uh, the viewers want to learn more about this, can you give us a, like a resource link or uh, what's yeah. the best place? Yeah, I think the best place actually is documentation. It's called the doc synthesized IO. So actually, uh, yeah, this is the route for both SDK and TDK products. And uh, yeah, I, I think this is pretty, pretty uh, like extensive uh, uh, documentation. Also, you have a uh, possibility to download uh, trials, uh, uh, like tooling uh, from, from, the, uh, from the documentation itself. So I think this is the best place uh, to start. Thank you very much. Uh, if you're watching, go check out the docs. Try synthesized uh, TDK on your projects. Uh, tell us how it feels to generate data uh, for your tests. And uh, I think this was, uh, this was it for today. Um, thank you very much for watching. And thank you, Ivan, for joining us from uh, Tallinn, Estonia today. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. Thank you for having me. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.